Well, turning overseas now, where Russia is coming under mounting international pressure after it ended a deal that would allow Ukrainian grain to be exported around the world. Several developing countries raised concerns about food shortages and price hikes at the United Nations Security Council meeting last night. Dominic Valaitis is following the latest developments for us. He joins us now from London. Dominic, tell us a little bit about the UN Security Council meeting. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that there was uh, considerable anger at the, at the meeting yesterday regarding Russia's decision to pull out of the so-called Black Sea grain deal and some particularly strong words too, Natalie, from uh, the UN's aid chief, Martin Griffiths, who said it would be the world's poorest and most vulnerable, potentially tens of millions of people, he said, who could end up paying the price. Here's a little more of what he had to say. Some will go hungry, some will starve, many may die as a result of these decisions. And we implore this council and the world beyond it to help to make every effort to restore the spirit, what the Secretary General at the time referred to as the beacon of hope that those two agreements represented for all of us in a world of such difficulty and tragedy. And Martin Griffiths, Natalie, wasn't alone uh, in criticising Moscow. During the Security Council session, we heard from several Western ambassadors who accused Moscow of using the collapse of the deal for uh, economic gain, that Russian food exports are now rapidly increasing and being sold at higher prices. Natalie. And, Dominic, what could the impact globally be on the grain deal now that it has ended, at least for now? Well, according to the United Nations, 45 countries have received food commodities under the uh, deal, China, Spain and Turkey receiving the most. And the UN says the deal has helped reverse food prices by more than 20 per cent. Now, since Russia pulled out on Monday, prices have spiked. For example, US wheat futures rose over 6 per cent this week and on Wednesday had their biggest daily gain since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So high- and upper-middle-income countries could well feel the impact. The UN says poorer countries could too, especially, as we've just heard, the most vulnerable, those which are dependent on food relief. The UN's World Food Programme, which is the world's largest humanitarian organisation, was able to transport more than 725,000 tonnes of wheat under the Black Sea grain deal. That food going to vulnerable people in eight countries, including Ethiopia, Yemen and Afghanistan. Russia, incidentally, says it is now negotiating exports of food to those most in need following its exit from the deal, but has not yet signed any contracts, Natalie? 